hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my youtube channel and here we are covering uh, everything about microservices initially we covered the rest services and then we started talking about the graphql and i covered like six to seven videos which is talking about nest js graphql implementation which is a schema based implementation and now what is left so if you talk about this architecture we were talking about apollo graphql federation and how we can compose the data coming from different graphql services we have already built the auth service and the gateway service now we can create a simple housing service and we will see how we can reference the user schema from this to this so that uh, like in the auth service we have a user entity and how we can reference the user service into a housing service so that let's say if i want to send a query okay give me all the houses bought by this particular user then i can fetch the user information at gateway level from this housing service and the auth service it's like a schema composition happening at the gateway level okay so this is what we are going to build and these are like uh, all the videos we have covered so you need to first go through all of these and then will can you can start the next one and what we have already achieved is this is the auth service this is the gateway service which is using a uh, gateway router here you can see apollo gateway and here we are passing the subgraph like i'm just passing auth api which i have and this is my gateway service so similarly i'm going to have another service added here which is home and this is like a home api so that we are going to build so we will just copy the auth service and we'll do changes on that this we have already covered in the previous video what all things we are doing with the handle authentication passing the context and using this apollo driver now there are two aspects maybe people will say okay we may not have a graphql sub services but we still want to have a same kind of implementation obviously you cannot have apollo graphql gateway apollo using apollo federation if you don't have a graphql service let's say i just have a simple rest apis then i can still use a simple apollo server not a graphql gateway and i can compose i mean it's not really a composition it's all about data fetching and then composition you will do manually at the apollo graphql server so that we can just see how that is happening so if i talk about the rest implementation here if you just see this documentation clearly says and i have done this using rest data source let's say you already have a, your legacy rest api is already created and now you wanted to expose a graphql implementation on top of your rest apis what you can do is you can create a rest data source for each and every microservice which you already have let's say auth service housing and booking you you just need to pass uh let's say this is like a data source class i need to create for each and every microservice which will have a base url and here you will just write your methods and what you will do you will just call this dot xeos or this dot get all these methods this dot get movie await this dot get movie so this is like same as making the api call and trying to fetch the data because it is implementing rest data source so it is providing all these methods get put post delete patch methods and how actually we are we will access this data source while you create your graphql database server uh, let's come to the example where we are populating the context okay yeah here here what you will do is when you start a graphql server you will provide these data sources in the context so that at the resolver level at the resolver level you should be able to access this data okay let me just show you the the real example i just need to scroll up a little bit so that i can talk about this particular portion yes here it is so i'm writing a resolver and once you have a data source inside a graphql context you will access the data source okay movie api home api booking api and get movie update movie delete movie fetch movie all those different methods you can call so this is this is a simple implementation you can just try a simple poc let's say you have a legacy rest apis and you want to now provide a single graphql interface on top of those rest apis that is possible and that works really nice and i have done that 
I can maybe give us some example reference. So you just create a REST data source. It's all about, okay, in this Apollo server, I need a user data. So it will make an explicit call. This will get a housing data. So it's like a data source you have created, which is REST data source, which will make a REST API call. Apollo Federation also does the same thing, just only, but it needs the GraphQL interface exposed, not the REST interface. And it does the schema stitching and composition and all those things on top of that. Okay, so where we are? Currently, we are building this gateway and we are going to look at these different directives provided by Apollo GraphQL Gateway. So this is the gateway and this is how we are introspecting and composing the different microservices. Okay. I wanted to just talk about a simple examples, then we will move to building our another service. Okay, so that we can just take a look into the demo uh, example. Let's move here. So what we want to build now is another service, let's say home service or another service, let's say booking. So what we are trying to do here, here is this is the gateway and this gateway should be able to compose the subgraphs coming from these graphs uh, graphql apis user home uh, manager or the booking manager service and the only thing is there are downsides of the introspect and compose what it needs it when you are running this uh, gateway all these endpoints should be up and running because it is doing these things at the runtime so there is another solution is remote graphql endpoints uh, which will not look for the runtime execution i mean fetching the schema at the runtime so both these endpoints should be up and running and working perfectly fine then only it can create uh, the gateway gateway instance otherwise it will break now uh, what we are going to do is i will just create a copy of auth service into packages because a lot of things we are going to do the same so it's better to create a copy instead of uh, writing all these things again and again so we already have the authorization logic added here and a simple bit authorization and guard logic added here nest js guard we are using on protected routes which will not allow you to access the data until unless you have authorization header so similarly these all are protected apis because you will access these apis once you are already logged in so we have a, a jwt auth guard and admin guard because admin can only assign a user uh, houses and can create a booking for the user for buying a house a simple backend implementation so this is auth service we'll just rename it to home service or home manager now the entities will be different here we can still use the domain module and if you look at the domain module it's uh, kind of a same code because we are writing another service but it's going to be using same stuff we just use the different modules instead of user module now we will use home module a home entity home schema and all booking schema and all so it's like a housing platform so user can do the login and can buy a house so house will have some facilities some features like okay 2 bhk 3 bhk number of rooms all the facilities like there is a swimming pool and all the the features which talks about the home that will be there and then there is a home entity so here instead of auth and user we are going to create some separate entities auth we can still keep instead of user we will just create another folder which is home and inside home we will create a home entity home resolver home schema and all so let's do that first of all let's check the existing code what do we have these are the graphical classes these will override this is our app module which is importing domain module inside domain module we are using graphical module dot for root in it passing the context using the apollo federation driver and passing all the definitions so in the source we will have we will generate this graphql dot class dot ts and it will look for all the dot graphql file inside uh, your domain any subfolders because that contains the schema like home schema home facility schema and all now there are some particular attributes or the directives we will be using 
let's uh, talk about that at the rate key if, if we can fetch something okay yes uh, this is important these are like uh, how we create a different directives so these are the directives which we need to use across services so user is already a microservice ha which has a user schema now how can i reference the user schema here inside another microservice so that is being done with the help of these entities and the schemas so this is product subgraph okay so if you wanted to reference it in another microservice because it's like it is again uh, finally going to recompose and create a single uh, schema so if you are not using at the rate key and using and putting all these product schema at multiple graphical services then there will be a conflict so what we are saying is there is a type product defined somewhere and i'm just redefining it and reusing it so defining a key is this is how we define it so this is how like the in the subgraph product subgraph is already there and here i'm just referencing it through the key so this another microservice will use this id to fetch the data of product from the product microservice so this is how we will create a resolve reference and uh, because here we are using product so it will call this particular microservice and will make the get product by id this is how we will resolve the reference across microservices because i want to get the the details of all the homes and their respective user or a user with all the homes that he has already bought so user reference will be resolved through the user microservice and the home reference will be resolved through the home book home manager service right so this is how we will uh, reference the product entity this is like a product subgraph and this is inventory subgraph when you use at the rate key that means it is ready it is you are not overriding it it is you are just reusing and, and referencing it so user reference is already created in the auth service in the home manager we will just use at the rate key to say okay this reference is already created and we are just creating a referencing so here referencing an entity without uh, contributing so these are the entities we are going to use and there are multiple directives actually we haven't used all of these like extend shareable uh, inaccessible override if you want to override then definition extends at the rate key extend if your subgraph library supports extend like uh, you wanted to extend a particular type to a different one there is another is a shareable so what i'm saying is type position as these two attributes which are shareable and i can just uh, like these are the at the rate shareable you can also even make the type shareable so those types can be shared across services and you can just particular say okay this variable is an inaccessible across microservices so these are custom directives you can also override the field definition in another service and this is external indicate the subscribe user can't resolve a particular field object but still need to define that field for other purpose okay name external because this cannot be resolved here so it is external okay so let's uh, dive into the code what we are going to do is we already have i think auth guards admin guard is already there only admin users can do that and auth guard is already created in the last video what auth guard does is it is using these gwt strategies auth strategy and auth strategy is extracting the token from the authorization header and validating it if it is uh, valid so we need to see how we can validate the jwt payload here we don't need to write it because we don't have the auth service here so we'll modify this auth strategy for the home manager service we will just check if okay uh, the user exists and the token is valid then allow that user to access the the resources okay Let's start writing the code and uh, let's see how it goes.